Building aircraft is a real pleasure and is something I'm proud of. This is matched by the great sense of responsibility we feel when later our families, our children or friends climb aboard. So we're committed to doing a perfect job every day, never overlooking anything. Airplanes are among the most advanced machines humans have ever created. They fly through storms, cross oceans in hours, and carry millions of people to safely every day. But behind every smooth flight is a long, complex process filled with precision, teamwork, and innovation. From the first digital sketches to the final coat of paint, building a plane like the Airbus A350 takes months of planning, thousands of workers, and over two million individual parts. And it all has to work perfectly. In this video, we'll go deep inside the world of airplane manufacturing, from design and materials to assembly and testing. Whether you're a frequent flyer or just curious about how things work, you're about to see just how much effort it takes to get a plane off the ground. Let's take off and see how airplanes are really made. Design and concept phase. The first step in building an airplane doesn't involve tools or materials. It starts with design, turning a concept into something that can actually fly. Engineers and designers work side by side, creating detailed plans for the aircraft. They think about how air flows, where to place the engines and how to balance the weight. Every curve and angle is shaped to move smoothly through the sky with as little drag as possible. They use advanced software to build 3D models of the aircraft, complete down to the last bolt. These digital planes are tested in virtual wind tunnels, letting teams spot problems before anything is built. We solve 90% of issues before we even touch the real plane, explains Sophia, an aerodynamics engineer. That's the power of design today. Safety plays a huge role too. Every part of the plane must meet strict standards, from the strength of the wings to how the cabin air flows. The team also considers how to make the plane comfortable for long flights with quieter engines and better air pressure. Airlines get involved here too. Each customer wants something different, more seats, a special lighting setup, or unique cabin layouts. So the design must be flexible without affecting safety or performance. Thanks to today's technology, this phase moves fast, but covers everything. Once the blueprint is approved, it becomes the roadmap for the next big step, turning those digital ideas into real flying parts. Now that we've seen how the plan comes together, let's look at the materials that make it all possible and why building a plane isn't like building anything else. Materials of the sky, when it comes to airplanes, not just any material will do. They need to be light enough to fly, but strong enough to handle stress, pressure, and wild temperature changes, sometimes all in a single flight. Modern aircraft like the Airbus A350 use a mix of high-tech materials. Carbon fiber composites make up more than half the plane. These materials are lighter than metal, but super strong, and they allow engineers to create complex aerodynamic shapes. There's still a place for aluminum and titanium too. Aluminum is great for areas where flexibility is important. Titanium is heavier, but it handles extreme heat and pressure, making it perfect for engine parts and landing gear. Each material is carefully chosen for its job. Nothing is wasted and everything must pass quality checks before it even makes it to the assembly line. You're not just working with parts, you're working with the future, says Lena, a composite technician. If the materials are right, the plane is right. Producing these materials is a process on its own. Carbon fiber is made by layering thin sheets of material with resin, then baking them at high heat. The result is strong but flexible parts that hold up for millions of miles. These materials also help make planes more fuel efficient and quieter, which matters not just for passengers, but also for the planet. Once the materials are ready, it's time to build the parts the wings, the fuselage, and everything in between. Next up, we'll look at how all these pieces come together across different countries before arriving at the final factory. It's a global puzzle, and timing is everything. Mega Manufacturing Network. Once the design is complete and the materials are ready, you might think the building starts right away, but not quite. First, the parts need to be made. And those parts, they come from all over Europe. Modern aircraft are too big and too complex to be built in just one place. So instead of building everything under one roof, companies like Airbus rely on a massive international network. 
Different countries and factories specialize in different components, like a continent-wide assembly line. For the Airbus A350, the nose section comes from France. The wings are built in the UK. The tail fin is made in Germany, and the horizontal stabilizers come from Spain. Other parts are shipped in from Italy, Belgium, and even the United States. It's like a high-stakes puzzle, and every piece has to arrive on time. We call it just-in-time delivery, says Marco, a logistics coordinator. If one part is late, it delays the whole build, so we have to be extremely precise. Keeping all of this organized is a job on its own. Thousands of suppliers, dozens of factories, and millions of parts. Every delivery has a schedule, and every part is tracked down to the hour. Even the way parts are packaged and transported matters. Delicate equipment needs shockproof containers. Large parts, like fuselage sections and wings, have their own shipping process, one that relies on something very special. And that brings us to one of the most important pieces in the entire system, the flying whale of the skies, the Beluga. The Beluga, aviation super courier. Now imagine trying to move a 32-meter airplane wing from one country to another. You can't exactly strap it to a truck or ship it by sea in time. That's where the Beluga comes in. Airbus's custom-built transport aircraft. It's called the Beluga because of its shape. It really does look like a giant, smiling white whale. But inside, it's a flying warehouse with a cargo bay large enough to carry full-size aircraft parts. The Beluga flies massive components, wings, fuselage sections, tail pieces, from factories across Europe to the final assembly site in Toulouse, France. It can carry loads up to 47 tons, with space for an entire plane section inside. The aircraft doesn't just fly, it delivers on a tight clock. Teams on the ground have less than an hour to unload its cargo bay before it's cleared for its next flight. One delay here, the entire schedule shifts. I've loved planes since I was a kid, says Baptiste, who supervises unloading in Toulouse. But working with the Beluga, that's the dream. It's the key to everything running on time. The Beluga is so important that Airbus operates an entire fleet, and now there's the Beluga XL, an even bigger version that can carry more cargo more efficiently. These planes keep the entire supply chain moving like clockwork. Thanks to the Beluga, parts from across the continent arrive where they need to be, quickly and safely. And once they touch down in Toulouse, something special begins. The moment everything starts coming together. Let's step into one of the most fascinating places in aviation, the final assembly line. Final assembly in Toulouse. Toulouse, France. This is where everything starts to look like an airplane. At the Airbus final assembly plant, giant aircraft parts that arrived on Belugas are lined up, checked, and brought together. Each section, the front, middle, and rear fuselage, goes through detailed preparation before they're joined. It all begins at Station 59, where teams install large interior pieces like galleys, lavatories, and crew rest compartments. What's special about this process is that cabin outfitting and structural assembly happen at the same time. That saves weeks in the overall schedule. Around 15 workers on each shift, electricians, technicians, and fitters, handle different tasks. They install wiring, equipment, and even prep areas for custom airline layouts. Everything must be perfect because once the fuselage is sealed up, there's no going back. It's not like building furniture, jokes Maxime, one of the fitters. Every screw matters. Every panel must hold, even in a storm at 38,000 feet. After the internal parts are in, the real show begins. The marriage, where the front, middle, and rear fuselage sections are joined together. This happens at Station 50. Each section is lifted into place and aligned with tenth of a millimeter accuracy. Then comes the riveting, tens of thousands of fasteners, many driven in by hand, hold the aircraft together. Precision is key. Even the tiniest misalignment would throw off the balance, and in flight, balance means everything. Once the fuselage is fully connected, the aircraft gets its landing gear and nose wheel. For the first time, this giant machine stands on its own wheels. It's a big moment for the team. Many compare it to a kind of berth. After weeks of work, the cigar, as they call the wingless fuselage, is ready to roll. Next stop, wings, tail, and the rest of the body. That's where this sleek structure begins to look and fly 
like the real thing. Cabin installation and customization. As the aircraft begins to take shape, the focus shifts inward, literally. While wings and landing gear are installed on the outside, a completely different team is busy building what passengers will actually experience, the cabin. This part is more than just seats and overhead bins. It's about comfort, safety, and efficiency, all packed into a flying space. And since no two airlines are the same, the cabin is often custom built for each customer. Some airlines want wider seats or more legroom. Others want LED lighting that changes color based on the time of day. And for long haul flights, crew rest areas hidden above the cabin need to be built into the structure. Inside the fuselage, teams are working in tight spaces, often above or below deck. They install overhead compartments, wall panels, seat supports, lighting units, and emergency systems. Everything has to be mounted perfectly with no room for error. We install what can't fit through the doors later, says Francois, head of cabin installation. If you miss your chance, the panel or unit doesn't go in. That's why timing matters so much. Even small things like a passenger reading light or oxygen mask have to be installed precisely. Every button, every latch, every seat recline mechanism must be tested before the plane moves forward in the assembly line. One clever trick Airbus floor to floor installation. This means everything from the floor up to the ceiling is put in place all at once by teams working together. It saves time and makes coordination easier. There's also the hidden side of the cabin, the insulation between the outer skin and the interior panels. It helps with soundproofing and keeps the temperature stable inside the plane. Before it goes in, workers crawl into the tightest corners of the cargo hold to clean everything spotless. No dirt or metal shavings can be left behind. As more cabin pieces go in, the aircraft finally starts to resemble a commercial jet on the inside. The plane now has a personality. It's no longer just a shell. And while all this is happening inside, something even more dramatic is taking place outside. The arrival of the wings. High precision wing and gear mounting. The wings of a plane aren't just for lift. They are the most critical aerodynamic surfaces of the entire aircraft. Without them, flight is impossible. So when it's time to attach them, precision is everything. At Station 40, a massive crane gently lowers each wing onto the fuselage. The wings of the A350 are made of carbon fiber composite, 32 meters long and 6 meters wide. They're incredibly light for their size, but strong enough to handle intense forces at cruising speed. Each wing is connected to the fuselage using thousands of hand-installed fasteners. Every bolt, every rivet is double-checked for strength. Even small misalignments can affect fuel efficiency and flight stability. It's like putting arms on a body, says Loic, a lead technician. Everything has to move together, flow together. If not, the plane won't fly the way it should. The design of the A350's wings is particularly advanced. Engineers spent thousands of hours testing them in wind tunnels. The leading edge includes a droop nose feature, which helps the plane fly more safely at lower speeds, especially during takeoff and landing. Next, the tail section is installed, both the horizontal and vertical stabilizers. These are also made from carbon fiber and arrive pre-wired and pre-tested. The vertical fin is the only major piece that's painted ahead of time because once installed, it's too tall to paint in the hangar. Alongside the wings, workers also attach the main landing gear. For the A350-1000, each landing gear set includes six wheels that must support the weight of a fully loaded plane, over 230 metric tons during landing. Connecting the hydraulic lines and electrical systems takes time, and everything is tested as soon as it's installed. When the wings, tail, and gear are all in place, the aircraft finally stands on its own six legs. It's a proud moment. For the first time, this once fragile structure begins to resemble the powerful machine it's meant to be. The next step, giving it power. With wings in place, it's time to bring in the engines and breathe life into the aircraft. Engine installation and ground tests. With the wings in place, there's still one vital ingredient missing, the power to fly, and that comes from the engines. For the Airbus A350, those engines are the Rolls-Royce Trent XWB, massive turbofans designed specifically for this aircraft. Each one weighs around eight tons, costs about 32 million euros, 
and produces over 84,000 pounds of thrust. Just one engine can take in over a ton of air every second during takeoff. Installing them is a delicate process. Technicians use a hydraulic lift to position each engine beneath the wing, then secure it with just two main mounting points. It sounds simple, but everything has to be aligned perfectly. This is one place where even a few millimeters can matter. You only get one shot with these, says Antoine, who oversees engine installations. You don't rush it, you respect the machine. Once both engines are mounted, they're connected to the aircraft's fuel, hydraulic, and electrical systems. The engines aren't just for thrust. They also power onboard systems, pressurize the cabin, and generate electricity in flight. After installation, it's time to test everything without even leaving the ground. The A350 goes through engine runs where the turbines are started and powered up to different speeds. Engineers monitor every system, fuel flow, vibration, temperature, and how the engine communicates with the cockpit. At the same time, teams are finishing up the final touches inside the cabin. Reading lights, tray tables, seat recline motors, it all has to work without a hitch. Even the signs and overhead bins are tested. Every system is double checked because safety is everything. This is the moment where the aircraft proves it's ready, not just to fly, but to carry hundreds of people at 38,000 feet. With the engines tested and the systems cleared, the aircraft is almost ready for flight. But before that, it needs its colors and a clean bill of health from the people who matter most, the customer. Paint, flight tests, and delivery. Before the plane can fly off into the sky, it has to look the part. That means it's time for the paint shop. And this isn't just for looks. The aircraft receives five separate coats of paint, each carefully applied using an electrostatic spray system. This method spreads the paint evenly and keeps the layers thin. Why? Because even paint adds weight and every kilogram affects fuel burn. The paint used is low in harmful chemicals, which is safer for both workers and the environment. It's also designed to stand up to extreme conditions, high speed air, UV light, and freezing temperatures. Once painted, the aircraft is rolled out looking like it's ready for takeoff, but there's still one major step left Flight testing. Experienced test pilots take the aircraft into the sky for the first time, running through a full range of flying conditions, takeoff, cruising, banking, landing, and emergency simulations. They check how the plane responds to controls, how the engines perform, and how it handles different altitudes and speeds. Meanwhile, inside the factory, inspectors go over the final customer requirements. Each airline orders a slightly different version of the plane, with custom interiors, branded headrests, lighting themes, and sometimes even seat configurations. We're delivering more than just a plane, says Claire, who works in delivery coordination. We're delivering the airline's promise to their passengers. After passing every test, the aircraft is cleared for handover. Representatives from the airline arrive in Toulouse, walk through their brand new jet, and give final approval. It's a proud moment for the entire team. And then, Finally, comes takeoff. A team of pilots climbs into the cockpit and taxis to the runway. The engines roar, the wheels leave the ground, and the latest A350 joins the skies. From over two million individual parts, across dozens of factories, through months of work and thousands of checks, it's all led to this one moment. A new airplane is born, ready to connect people, countries, and continents. And for the builders, there's no greater pride than looking up and saying, that one, we made that fly.